Margaritaville is a fairly polarizing, all or nothing kind of brand. So this review comes down to one basic question. At its core, is a Margaritaville resort the correct choice for your next vacation? We'll explore that and more in this quirky little review. Welcome to the Riviera Maya. If you're new to the channel, let me be the first and possibly the last person to welcome you. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket and as always, the price that I paid is in the description below. Margaritaville had no prior knowledge that I'd be filming today and I wasn't compensated by them for doing so. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my own unique experience. The rest, I'll let it speak for itself. Let's get started. We are now heading from the main road to an enclave of resorts in the Riviera Maya. I should note that there are two Margaritavilles in this immediate area, but they're not close enough to walk between. One is the Island Reserve Riviera Cancun, which is a family resort, and the other is the Island Reserve Riviera Maya, where we're heading today, which is adults only. This property just opened in June of 2023, one of three all-inclusive Margaritavilles currently open and has a total of 355 rooms. I'm not usually one to beat around the bush, so I want to get into one key point about the demographics here which I think may help you with your choices. Okay, let me set the scene for you. Close your eyes. Imagine you're in Pensacola Beach during spring break and it's 1985. Kegs are tapped, tanning oil is very much a thing, and a thin layer of Aquanet can be felt on most surfaces. Take a good look at everyone around you. Now, open your eyes and imagine if those exact same people, 39 years later, were still partying, drinking, and tanning, all in the same place. Perhaps some of them brought their adult children along as well. Welcome to an adults-only Margaritaville. Of course, this is anecdotal from my stay alone, but after staying here, I can fairly confidently say that this is certainly the target audience. This isn't a dig at any specific group of travelers, but fact of the matter is, every resort on Earth has a specific demographic which they cater to. Sometimes it's a bit hard to define, and sometimes it's as clear as the sky is blue. When you arrive, you'll be greeted by some very enthusiastic staff who will offer you a margarita ice pop and explain the resort to you as you check in, with catchphrases thrown into just about every sentence. I think I heard fins up around 40 times during my short stay. I feel like I would need an entire video, maybe an entire channel, just to get into who Jimmy Buffett is and what Margaritaville is meant to be. So I'm just gonna focus on their resorts. But there are also timeshares, cruises, restaurants, casinos, breweries, stores, and more. In the middle of the lobby is the Salted Rim Bar, which is the central hub for drinks after dark especially. You can get a good look of the bottles on offer. Staff here have pretty broad latitude, and while it was always in the spirit of having fun, it's the only resort that I've ever been to where drinking, a lot, was encouraged directly by staff. I know plenty of people visit all-inclusives without the intention of or desire to drink. For them, this is worth noting. It's a very personality-driven service style, and it's the kind of place where you would likely strike up a 20-minute conversation at any time with any member of staff. The lobby is actually elevated, with a terrace overlooking the compact U-shaped property. Wait, do you see that? Am I supposed to bow or give an offering? Should I should I should I give it my flip-flops? Is this home? Did I choose this resort specifically because it had a giant turquoise flip-flop? 
Absolutely not. Don't be silly. It was just a, a coincidence. Who, who could ever have known such a thing even existed? Before we walk around the property, let's take a look at where we are. This area of coastline, frankly, is known by many names, but it's closest to Puerto Morelos. It's around a 20 minute drive south of Cancun's airport and 30 minutes to the heart of the hotel zone. This area is not known for its coastline and many resorts here focus on the value proposition that they provide. Water tends to be more brown than blue and beaches at resorts around here are usually artificial if there's one at all. The resort has one giant pool which meanders across the common areas, serving as the quiet pool, the party pool, and the lagoon access pools as well, with small bridges connecting all of it. The first successful Margaritaville store opened in 1985 in Key West, and the first hotel opened in Pensacola Beach, with Myrtle Beach and Hollywood, Florida not far behind. I did want to speak about the design of this common area a bit, I know, I, I, I think we all know precisely what they're going for. Breezy, fun, island colors, beach vibes. But in person, it all just comes off very adolescent. I'm only talking about the large outdoor area. The indoor areas throughout the resort, I think are mostly nicely designed and on theme. Out here though, I get more kids club vibes than lush tropical resort. Fun can look beautiful too, Here you can see the lagoon access pool rooms. They, pretty much like most of the rooms here, are out in the open. There isn't much privacy on any of the balconies. Note also that the balcony lights, all of them, are kept on at night. Personally, I'm someone who likes to sleep with the shears closed to let in some ambient light. But here, I had to use the blackout drapes. Note that the pools are heated, but only during the cooler months. I assure you, this pool is not normally roped off with police tape. From the looks of it, they just finished a water treatment. All of this outdoor footage now was filmed early in the morning, hence the lack of people. Though being a new resort, I can't say that it was really all that bustling. And here you can see the beach, or, well, the water. Based on the stairs that they have, it would seem to me that there is meant to be some sort of a beach or something, but clearly that is not the case at the moment. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help the channel grow. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. There are three venues outside, the first of which is the liveliest of the bunch at the Seaside Bar. There's also an outdoor lunch and dinner shack that serves up short order food all day long. Two things to mention. First up is that their website is pretty bad, as in useless. They do have an app though. If you download it, you can register with any details and then you'll be able to access all of the menus, operating hours, and activity schedules. Fair warning though that the app is not the most user-friendly. Let's head to Landshark for lunch. 
Landshark is their own brand brewery, which has a casual all-day menu of salads, sandwiches, burgers, and tacos, as well as four of their own beers on tap. There's also a great cocktail beer menu. I had a pulled pork burger, and the food here, and honestly, all of the food here, felt like it was outpacing the resort itself. Everything definitely had an American comfort food theme to it, but it was all just done really well. Ingredient quality was good, flavors were correct, food was hot, plates came out as ordered. I, I know these are basics, but it's rare to get all of them consistent across an entire resort. So I do give plenty of props to Margaritaville for all of their food programs. Let's head up to my room. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as a link to my Cancun Resort playlist. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. The rooms continue with the same design theme, but I think are done just much better than the outdoor areas. The furniture build quality is surprisingly good. The design is complete and cohesive. It's fun, but still functional. If ever there was a theme room which hit the nail on the head, I, I'd say maybe this might be the one. And that is the first thing that I really enjoyed about the room. Putting this much design into a room without it feeling way too much, too tacky, is a difficult balancing act. But it's been well done. The second thing that I liked was that comfort and practicality were obviously in mind when they designed the room. From the bed to the sofa to the ottoman to the desk chair, there wasn't an uncomfortable seat in the house. Lastly, I really like the mini bar concept, which I'll explain in a little bit. I'll put up the extra bits now as I get into the points that I wasn't a fan of. The first one I mentioned already, the balcony and the exterior lights left on all night long. It just makes no sense to not be able to control it from inside the room. Second thing, the bathroom products. The shampoo, shower gel, and the like were way, way, way too heavily scented. And with really artificial smelling coconut and lime scents as well. Made me feel like I was a walking, talking pina colada for a few hours. Last up, and this is probably the biggest problem, it's the noise bleed from the hallways. Three reasons. First, the noise insulation isn't great to begin with. Between the rooms, between the floors, between the room and the hall. Second, the doors slam when they close. And third, the hallways are all tile, so you hear every single person walking by. Really not a good resort for light sleepers. So about the mini bar, when you arrive in the room, it'll be stocked with water, coffee, and tea. When you check in, you'll be granted a certain number of points based on the number of guests and nights that you stay. I received 2,500 points from my one night stay. Keep in mind, these are digital points attached to your room's folio. You don't have to carry anything around. With those points, you can go shopping at Joe Merchants, which is their on-site mini mart and cafe. Sorry for having the water running, but it's the only way not to catch my reflection in the fins. Besides the product, the shower itself was really nice and a good size. And last but not least, we have the balcony.
The balcony was spacious, and I do like how the angles of the balconies orient everyone towards the sea view. But the lack of a wall or partition in between the balconies just makes for the quiet mornings on the balcony with a cup of coffee a little bit awkward. Everything in the store can be charged to your room to pay for a checkout like any other resort, or it can be deducted from your points. You can see a few of the prices. 2,500 points was a fair amount to get you a few soft drinks and snacks. Keep in mind that you could also get most of these at all the bars. They allow, if not encourage, getting two at a time. But this is just a nice little gimmick to help keep your room stocked. There's also a really good coffee shop inside the same space. Note that the, the cafe stuff is all included in the all-inclusive package. For dinner, there are two specialty restaurants, the first of which is JWB Steakhouse. I didn't dine here, but if it's anything near the experience that I had at Frank and Lola's, then I'm pretty sure it would be a great steakhouse experience. Frank and Lola's is their atmospheric Italian, perhaps Italian-American restaurant with a diverse menu and very friendly staff. The interior design is somewhere in between modern big box hotel restaurant and an acid trip, or I'd have to guess. The service started off with some great focaccia, along with olive oil and balsamic. For my starter, I went with the sliced veal and tuna sauce, which was incredibly tender and delicious. I could have done with, I don't know, triple the amount of tuna sauce. It was that good. For the main dish, I had chicken parm, which despite having the pasta on top of it, was actually still crispy and piping hot. Much appreciated. Finally, for dessert, I went with the surprisingly light lemon panna cotta. Perhaps a bit too much gelatin, but otherwise great flavor. Activities at the resort are focused around music and wellness. Here you can see a sample of a typical day schedule. Okay, time for breakfast, and for that we head to the Boathouse, which is their buffet restaurant. This space, the scent of old mop water aside, was pretty impressive. It's as if the head chef and the manager had a meeting to decide what to include on the buffet, and at some point, one of them said, how about we just give them everything and go get a margarita? For this resort's price point, this was an impressive spread. Have a look around.
Two last things to show you before we wrap this one up. First off is the fitness center. And then we have what I can only assume is a space used for wedding ceremonies. Go to the top floor and walk up a flight of stairs and you'll have the best view at the resort. So overall, personally, I'm split, but I always try to score based on who I think the target guest is. And from that perspective, they mostly deliver pretty well. Regardless of the target audience though, their food program really does shine. I really do hope that you enjoyed this review today. If you did, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on Fly Dubai from Salala to Dubai. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.